I don't think democracy is just political rights. Um, as the Nobel laureate Amartya Sen said, democracy is important for people protecting themselves and securing their economic rights. Studies have, been, studies have been done that show that countries tend to develop more if they have democracy. And there are studies of countries at equal levels of development to try to measure this. Governments that are accountable to their people are much more motivated to care for the interests of their people uh, than governments that are not accountable uh, to, uh, to their citizens. Uh, and so the expenditure on um, social problems and economic problems, housing, education, jobs, is, is higher in, con in countries that are democratically elected than in countries that are not democratically elected. Uh, so there is a very actual close interrelationship between economic and political rights. And it's very important to understand this relationship and not to treat democracy is something that's unrelated to people's economic well-being as well as you know their their human rights and their 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 personal security well for all of those reasons um, the uh, the issues of that uh, of the millennium challenge the issues <clears throat> that relate to social and economic uh, security uh, are not unrelated to the quality of democracy. Uh, governments that are accountable to their people will tend to treat them better uh, and people will have a better life. Um, and I think it's very important to understand that freedom is, that freedom is part of and is essential to uh, the kind of uh, social and economic uh, interests that people have in, in wanting a better life. You really can't have a, a good a good life, a good quality of life, unless you're in control of your own destiny. The idea is interested in um, consulting with people at the grassroots to try to understand the quality of democracy in different countries. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important. The community of democracies is a, not, it's an inter intergovernmental association but it also involves non-governmental organizations. Um, civil society activists today are being, uh, are being victimized by governments that pass repressive laws that restrict their ability to receive international funding or even to function. Um, and a number of governments have come together through the community of democracies to try to defend civil society against these repressive uh, laws and uh, Canada is heading up a working group in the community of democracies. Sweden is part of it and um, uh, there are a number of non-governmental organizations such as the National Endowment for Democracy, Article 19, uh, the International Center for Not-for-Profit Law and Civicus that are working with governments in this effort. So the community represents a, 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 a forum where non-governmental and organizations with governments can work together to advance democratic goals and it's important that IDEA is part of that. And the meeting opens in Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia on April 27th. So it'll be three days. The governments are meeting on the 29th and the non-governmental groups will be meeting on April 27th and 28th. And there are a lot of very interesting meetings that are being held um, on this issue of defending civil society. There'll be meetings of parliamentarians. There'll be regional network meetings. Um, and there will be governments that are coming together with uh, activists to talk about the defense of human rights. 